So you get money up front from, from the tenant buyer in, a, in the form of a non-refundable option fee. You also get money on a monthly basis through the, the spread on the, on the rents or the PITI, the, the principal, interest, taxes, and insurance. And then you also get money on the back end when that cash buyer actually cashes out and closes on that, that property. So that's one of my favorites, a sandwich lease option. I absolutely love that strategy, guys. If you're a real estate investor and are wondering how to raise and leverage private money to make more profit on every deal, then you're in the right place. On Raising Private Money, we'll speak with new and seasoned investors to dissect their deals and extract the best tips and strategies to help you get the money, because the money comes first. Now here's your host, Jay Connor. My guest today on Raising Private Money has actually been investing in real estate since 2016. Now, his emphasis has been on wholesaling houses and using other creative uh, strategies. But in addition to that, he's also raised private money. In fact, hundreds of thousands of dollars in private money. And the reason he's done this is, first of all, what we all want, create financial and time freedom for himself and his family, but he's also a mentor and coach. He helps students all over the country specializing in the world of wholesaling. In addition to that, my guest is the author of his book titled Adventures in Wholesaling. Let me show you how. And of course, it's in all the major book outlets. Now, the reason that I have my guest on today here on Raising Private Money is because he, like myself, has got a go-giver attitude. He's got a go-giver spirit. He lives the go-giver life. In other words, he's always looking to serve first. And he's created what's called the Nationwide Real Estate Mastery Podcast, which, by the way, is an amazing podcast. My guest had me on his podcast uh, not too long ago. And on the podcast, he gives out actionable, step-by-step things to do that will actually help you as a real estate wholesaler investor to get your very first deal or your next deal. In addition to that, my guest owns a world-class, first-rate virtual assistant company that provides professionally trained virtual assistants that can serve you in the real estate business. Very, very affordable assistants that will help you buy your time back and scale your business. In just a moment, You're going to be meeting my special guest and my friend, Sean Young, right after this. Oh, my lands, Sean. Welcome (laughs) to the show, my friend. Jay, thank you for having me, brother. I, I, I'm so honored to be on the one and only Jay Connors show. So thank you for having me, brother. Thank you. <laughs> well, it's great to have you on the show, Sean. I really enjoyed being on your podcast. As I mentioned just a moment ago, the Nationwide Real Estate Mastery Podcast. So you focus in, I mean, I know you've raised a lot of private money as well. Um and you primarily focus on wholesaling, right, um, and creative strategies. Let's start with the wholesaling. Um, why wholesaling? Why is that your primary focus? Well, Jay, uh, I, I, why wholesaling is my primary focus, it, it's literally kind of by default. I, When I first got started in real estate, I was laid off of a, a, a job. I, I, I knew I wanted to get in real estate, didn't know exactly what to do. I just knew that real estate was the direction to go in. So I, I went to a seminar. Uh, They got us really excited. Uh, At the end, they sent us to the back and asked us to whip out our credit cards. And I laid down a a good deal of money. (laughs) And uh, during that entire year process, I I didn't really accomplish much. I I felt like, hey, I must be the dumbest guy out here or this real estate thing just isn't for me. I almost threw in the towel, Jay, because, again, I was a top six figure sales executive, great earner, top three percent. But when the cuts came, everyone was was a casualty of the cut. So. I said to myself, hey, I'll never be in this position again. So that's what led me into the real estate. So when I almost gave up, Jay, was I, I said, I'm going to give myself 30 days. 
I, I Googled, what is the quickest way to make money in real estate? What is the creative, most creative, fastest way to make money in real estate? And a gentleman's name, one of our good friends, Ron LeGrand popped up. <laughs> and uh, it was a $99 course. So I went through Ron's $99 course. And that actually taught me how to do a lease option, which was my first deal. I got you. Um, so let's make sure our listeners and viewers are on the same page with us. Different real estate investors have different definitions of wholesaling and what a wholesale deal is and what a wholesale deal looks like. Um, let's assume let's assume that we have a viewer or listener here on the show that does not know really for sure what you're talking about. So unpack yes. what you mean by wholesaling and what that looks like. 100% guys. And thank you for, uh, for allowing me that opportunity because that is very important. So remember, Jay asked me why wholesaling. And if you, if you realize that I just said I did a, a sandwich lease option, which is actually what I did for my first deal, because I didn't know. I didn't know what these things were called. I didn't know what the different exit strategies were called. So I got a coach, guys. When I made my first little bit of profit, I got a coach. And my coach was another good friend of ours, Tom Kroll, um, which, which taught me how to do wholesaling, guys. So the reason why wholesaling is, I believe, is one of the best strategies for someone who's brand spanking new is because it, it has the lowest barrier of entry. Um, the least amount of funds are required, uh, as well as the least amount of knowledge, so to speak. So wholesaling in a nutshell, guys, is finding properties for a discount, negotiating with the seller of that property for a, a discounted rate on what the, the value of that property is worth assigning your your position in the contract that you've just signed with that seller over to your cash buyers who will buy that position for again a discount off of the market value and what's there's a spread in the middle let's say if your seller's selling for thirty thousand you sell to your cash buyer for forty thousand that ten thousand dollar difference is what's called your wholesale fee and that's wholesaling in a nutshell you know uh sean whether you're wholesaling and what we call staying in a deal, which is what I, <coughs> excuse me, <coughs> which is what I do. I stay in the deal. And the way you stay in the deal means you got to have the money <laughs> to take down the deal. You got to have the money to close it. You know, Sean wholesales a deal and that means he gets it under contract. And now he's going to assign his contract to another real estate investor who actually has the cash or knows where to get the cash to actually close on that deal and buy it. And then that other real estate investor is going to pay Sean, what he just said, the assignment fee, right? So whether you are wholesaling a deal, which means you found the deal, you found the seller, you negotiated the deal, you got it under contract, or you did the same thing and you're going to stay in the deal, whether you're wholesaling and assigning and again, assignment fees uh, or whether you're going to stay in the deal, you still got to find the deal. Now, yep. in today's market, on my lands, prior to COVID, <laughs> this thing called deals in the MLS. Since COVID, I ain't seen a deal in the mobile <laughs> listing service, right? You know, list of our realtor, which means... Mm -hmm. You just might as well say all of our real estate deals are what we call off market. Another word for mm -hmm. off market is these mm -hmm. are owners of properties that are willing to sell their property directly to you, the investor, mm -hmm. without a real estate agent or realtor being involved. They're also called FISBOs, which means for sale by owner, off market houses. That being mm -hmm. said, I tell you, Sean, you know, there's no inventory, meaning there's no inventory in the multiple listing service, which means we got to be pretty good. You got to be pretty good at finding and locating these sellers. And, you know, in my experience, Sean, sometimes the marketing that we do, the seller really hadn't even considered selling until we reached out to them through our different marketing channels. When I say a marketing channel, I don't mean television, our different ways that we <laughs> communicate and reach out, you know, and, and, and tell people that own houses, 
that we could be interested in in buying their house. All that being yeah. said, Sean, there's there's hundreds of ways to find motivated sellers um, and communicate with them. You know, you got the list of finding them. You got the way of, you know, how you reach out to them and et cetera. In my teeny tiny little market, Sean, of only 40,000 people, we do two to three houses a month, averaging $78,000 each deal. We every day have got nine, nine ways, nine ways that we market and find motivated sellers. But I don't want to talk about me. I want to talk about you. What way, first of all, what market are you particularly investing in? But I'm sure you've got mentoring students all over the nation. 100%, 100%. Great question. Well, the market that I'm in, guys, is I, I'm based here in Atlanta, Georgia. So Georgia is one of my markets. Alabama is another market of mine, as well as North Carolina. Now, as Jay mentioned, I do have students that are all over the nation. So I do help them close deals all over the nation. However, guys, if you are getting started, I suggest that you start in your own backyard. Now, Jay is in a market where there's a, a population size of 40,000. I would normally recommend that you have at least 150,000 to maybe 200,000 to be able to fully, fully get, a, get your, your foot in the door, especially in today's market. Not saying that it's totally impossible to do it in a market where there's 50,000. You can 100% absolutely do it you just have to come in with with different techniques and different different ways that, that you are going to operate your business for a traditional wholesale business which is where you go find those deals again for the lowest amount possible and then sell those to your cash buyers you need what's called co comparables you need comps so you need a, a number of deals taking place in order so when you get your deal on a contract you have something to compare it to so that your cash buyer can see the, the value in that and in today's market in particular, being that we are in a buyer's market, I highly suggest that you go out there and get relationships with all the cash buyers that you can. You want to go out there and create strong relationships with cash buyers, do some research, look on the ML, look on Zillow, look on, on the properties that are being sold, reach out to listing agents on properties that they have listed and that have sold and ask them, hey, are your buyers looking for more properties like that? Are you, you, absolutely. There's multiple ways to do it, but guys, you got to reverse it, reverse engineer it, so to speak, in this market. Get a relationship with buyers, figure out what they want, and then service their appetite. And Sean, the cash buyers that you're talking about are real estate investors that have the cash, or they got the private money, or they got the lines of credit that they're able to take down the deals from you and other and other wholesalers. So, Sean, what are your favorite, most consistent, most consistent ways to locate these motivated sellers that are off market? And the reason I say what's working today is because one of the three of the nine ways that we use every day and every week in my market, we didn't even use three years ago. You know what worked three years ago? may not be working as well today 100%. in some markets. So what is working for you today uh, to locate motivated sellers? Guys, what's working for us is good old batch leads, guys. I use batch leads to pull our list. We put specific filters in, high equity, out-of-town owners, different filters that we're able to put inside of, of, of this um, tool that we use and batch leads is a tool. It's a it's a lead generation tool. It can do other services, but for this particular reason, that's what we use it for is for lead generation. We use it to actually find our lists before we get those lists skip traced. Now is batch leads a website? Batchleads.com. Batch yeah, it's batchleads.io actually, guys. And if you want to take advantage of a to, to of a seven day free trial. Get you a thousand free downloads, test it out, guys. Go on over to batchleads.io forward slash S H A U N Y O U N G. Simple as that. Try them out, guys. Awesome. Batchleads.io forward slash my guest name, Sean, Sean Young, Young, to get the seven, uh, seven day trial. Now, you know, when you're getting leads and you're downloading leads and et cetera, there's all different kinds of lists of potentially motivated sellers. What are your favorite lists these days to use? Guys, we really like to target um, lists that have multiple motivations. So, so let me give you an example of what that means. 
let's say they're on the the uh, tax, they're behind on taxes. They're also on a code violation list. They're also a high equity list. That That's a someone who's hitting multiple targets of ours. So we would consider that to be more of a motivated seller for us. So we really like to go after code violations. We like to go after government lists, again, tax liens, uh, anything related to the county or related to the government. And the reason why we like those the best is because those are, are usually the hardest to get. Um, when you when you are using a service like Batch or, or any of the other ones that are out there, guys, everyone has access to those leads, 100%. Anyone, in, anyone can buy those leads. So you are you want to get more, more of a specialized list. And so that's that's the best way that we do it, guys, is going directly to the county, asking for those lists, water shutoff lists, code violation lists. Those are the best ones to work with, guys. Just start with those two. Excellent. Uh, let's change gears a little bit, um, Sean. You know, I know you know as well as I do, a lot of people starting in real estate investing, uh, they got day jobs. And they're asking themselves the question, how in the world can I do this? Like, even if I know how to do it, I learn how to do it. How in the world am I going to have the time to do this thing called real estate investing? And you have um, worked with virtual assistants. you got a world-class virtual assistant uh, company that provides world-class uh, rate A virtual assistants. Let's drill down on that a little bit. First of all, what is a virtual assistant and how is it they can work with a real estate investor to make this machine or make this business turn into a machine? Guys, a virtual assistant is just what it says. It's an assistant that's virtual, but I want you to consider that as an employee who's not in an office physically located with you because a virtual assistant can be located anywhere. Again, it's just not in a physical location with you. Our company is based here in Atlanta, Georgia. However, our virtual assistants are sourced from the Philippines. Our agency is, is we have another location as well in the Philippines. So guys, when you are looking for a virtual assistant, that is how you are, are, are to look at it as an employee. It's just someone who's not physically located in your location. So what can a virtual assistant do to assist a real estate investor? Um, first of all, we'll start with that. What kind of tasks can they do? Guys, if you're working a nine to five, or even if you're doing this full time, the type of tasks that a virtual assistant can do for you guys are, are priceless on what they, the value on that is. So some of those things, some of those tasks can be market research, pulling lists for you, skip tracing, managing your text blasting campaigns, managing your outgoing call campaigns, your cold calling campaigns, responding to emails, responding to those text messages, sending out agreements. Guys, the, the list goes on. Managing your CRM database. Guys, if you don't have a virtual assistant, I'm, I'm going to be 100% honest with you. Especially if you have a nine to five, you're going to be in for a challenge because there's a lot that needs to be done um, on a consistent basis. And you, you're going to need help to do that. That's where the team comes in. You got to do this the smart way. I've coined a term that I call the smart wholesaling method, guys. And basically what that means is using proven systems, strategies, and a virtual assistant to get you where you need to go. You know, uh, I started using virtual assistants uh, in my real estate investing business, Sean, all the way back to 2010. 2010 mm -hmm. is when I first started working with virtual assistants. And one myth, one misconception that most new real estate investors think is I can't afford, I, I can't afford a virtual assistant. You know, I, I you know, I'm, I'm investing money on marketing to find these deals and then I got to pay somebody. Well, just how affordable can a virtual assistant be? Great, great question, guys. Virtual assistant prices can range from $3 an hour all the way up to $15, $16, $17 an hour, guys. So in between that, with, with, that's your sweet spot, so to speak. I'd say between $7 and $11. That's the range that you want to particularly be in when you are looking for talent. Why do I say that? Because it's very important. Consider this, guys. If you're getting a virtual assistant from an agency, that agency that's providing that virtual assistant is taking a fee for that. And most virtual assistants out here are working through an agency. So that virtual assistant gets a cut of that. So the, the, the lower that price is that you're paying in general, let's say you're paying $4. How much could that VA be making per hour? 
How incentivized are they going to be to work hard for you day in and day out? How incentivized are they going to be to not work for you from, you know, one to four o'clock and then from five to eight be working for me? What, what, what incentivizes that? So it's a good pay. It's a good payment process, guys. So we we go out and recruit the best of the best. Uh, we take guys from all t- sorts of, of, of industries. We bring them in. We train them. They go through a, a three-step screening process with our company to ensure that they can meet and match the needs of our clients. So when it comes to training a virtual assistant, um, someone may be thinking, well, you know, I don't have time to train them. I mean, like, you know, I'm learning myself. So how does the virtual assistant get trained and knows what to do? Awesome question, guys. Our, our virtual assistants, they come pre-trained for you guys. So depending on what you're doing with your business, they're going to pretty much know exactly what to do to help you out. No, they don't come in and run your business for you. You still need some form of direction on what you're doing with your business. But as far as being trained on utilizing tools, as far as being trained on what to say to the sellers, how to manage that process, RVAs are 100% trained on multiple tools that are out there that are pretty standard for our industry. They're trained on the processes, and we hand that over to the virtual assistant. That virtual assistant checks in with you every single morning. Hey, good morning. How's it going? At the end of that shift, they're going to send you a report that says exactly what they've done. We've made 400 calls today. We had 39 contacts and we've got two leads. I'll see you tomorrow. At the end of the week, you get an end of the week report. So it's constant communication. We train that so that you also, um, that becomes a part of your culture as well with your own company. If it's not already that you have constant communication with your employees on on a daily basis to, to make that organization run smoothly and successfully. Well, I tell you, Sean, that's a really, really valuable service there to, you know, you know, a real estate investor when using a service like yours doesn't have to go out and hire people. They don't have to run ads for people. They don't have to train people. I mean, it's like bringing a right hand person on a silver platter right to them that's already trained. And you know what's pretty cool about that, particularly if it's a new real estate investor, uh, the virtual assistant is actually going to be able to train the new real estate investor, <laughs> to, uh, or at least, at least at, you know, at least work together. Well, we've talked about wholesaling. Um, you know, one thing I mentioned at the start of the show is I just love staying in the deals. You know, and and a wholesaler gets to pick and choose like you have, Sean, on staying in whatever deals they want to do. And what we mean by staying in a deal is you're not, you don't wholesale it out for an assignment fee of $10,000 or whatever. You stay in, you make an average profit like I do with 78000 I got a free gift for our listeners, and that is my new private money guide. You can download it for free. Uh, the name of this guide is Seven Reasons Why Private Money Will Skyrocket Your Real Estate Business and Help You Build Incredible Wealth. Uh, to get on the fast track to getting all the private money that you would want for your real estate deals, you can download it at jayconner.com. That's J A Y C O N N E R.com forward slash money guide. Again, I'm an, I'm an ER, not an OR. J A Y C O N N E R.com forward slash money guide to get on the fast track to getting private money for your deals. Sean, we've talked about virtual assistants, uh, your amazing virtual assistant company. Uh, we've talked about wholesaling. But you are also a wizard in the world or the arena of creative strategies. Share with our listeners and viewers, what is one, and I know you have many, but what is one of your favorite creative strategies? What is it? How does it work? And why? Guys, one of my most favorite real estate strategies, guys, is a creative strategy that's called sandwich lease options, guys. Why is this my favorite strategy, guys? Because of one thing that Jay mentioned earlier, which is the ability to stay in the deal. So guys, with the sandwich lease option, it's just like it sounds. It's a sandwich situation. The seller being at the top, you being in the middle, you're the meat, you're the cheese, you're the lettuce and tomato. And at the bottom is your in tenant buyer, your qualified tenant buyer. So guys, the way that that deal looks is you find a seller that's in a situation that needs your help. Let's say they've lo- they're losing their job. They need to relocate, can't handle two mortgages. Guys, you come in, you take over the mortgage and you say, can I get, can I purchase your property for the price that it's worth at the end of the, at, can I purchase your property for the price that it's worth at the closing, at the time of closing? All right. 
So that's simple. Now you go out and find your tenant buyer. You put your qualified tenant buyer in place. Whatever the terms that you negotiate with your seller, you negotiate different or better terms with your buyer to make it short, to simplify this. So let's say if the mortgage or the PITI, principal interest taxes and, and insurance, each month is $2,000, you go out there and find a qualified tenant buyer that you're going to put in place for $2,500 because now there's a, a, a point and a reason for you to stay in the middle of that deal for the monthly spread and also for the equity that's available at the end when that when that cash buyer, qualified tenant buyer does cash out on the deal. So you get money up front from, from the tenant buyer in, a, in the form of a non-refundable option fee. You also get money on a monthly basis through the, the spread on the, on the rents or the PITI, the, the principal, interest, taxes, and insurance. And then you also get money on the back end when that cash buyer actually cashes out and closes on that, that property. So that's one of my favorite, guys, a sandwich lease option. I absolutely love that strategy, guys. Sean, thank you so much for sharing your expertise. How can people connect with you, keep the conversation going, and get more value from Sean Young? Guys, head on over to nationwiderealestatemastery.com. Book a call with me. I would love to speak with you. When you book a call, you actually get me, uh, the, the guy that you see here on, on the screen here. So I, I love to speak with any of you, see if we'd be a good fit to work together. Uh, because again, I'm not a good fit for everybody and everyone's not a good fit for everyone else. So let's see if we'd be a good fit. To connect with Sean Young, my good friend and fellow mastermind member, get on over to www.nationwiderealestatemastery.com. That's nationwiderealestatemastery.com. And as Sean just said, you're going to get to visit directly with Sean himself. Sean, thank you so much for sharing and giving so much value today. I love you, brother. Man, I love you too, Jay. Thank you for having me. God bless you. And you have an awesome rest of your day. Thank you so much for having me. And there you have it, my friend, another episode of Raising Private Money. I'm Jay Connor, your host, also known as the Private Money Authority. And in order for us to keep having amazing guests, just like we had with Sean today, be sure and get right on over and like, share, subscribe. If you happen to be listening on iTunes or Spotify, be sure and follow because that will help us keep bringing back more guests for you, our followers. If you're watching on YouTube, be sure and ring that bell so you don't miss out and you get notifications on upcoming amazing episodes. I'm Jay Connor, wishing you all the best. Here's to taking your business and your personal life to the very next level. I look forward to seeing you right here on the next episode of Raising Private Money. Are you feeling inspired by the knowledge you gained in this episode? Then head over to jayconner.com slash money guide. That's J-C-O-N-N-E-R dot com slash money guide and download your free guide that shares seven reasons why private money will skyrocket your real estate investing business right now. Again, that's jconnor.com slash money guide to get your free guide. We'll see you next time on Raising Private Money with Jay Connor.